One is for the detent spring. And then put all the interior bolts in the pan. And we have the three 716s head bolts. We have two governor tubes going in the back of the case. And you just have to grab a screwdriver and get these governor tubes out. That valve body will come right off. Take the two governor tubes out of the valve body. You can set that aside for now. It'll be one gasket. On the valve body here. We have our detent solenoid. One wire. At that point, the separator plate will come off. We'll have a case gasket. Now the valve body and the case gasket are different. You can see here that says VB, that tells you it's valve body. Here it says C for case. Next we'll take our uh, reverse band servo cover off, our half inch head bolts. Cover, metal gasket, servo itself. You can see it's got no ring around it, spring inside. Intermediate servo, spring, <coughs> cup, with the piston, and the ring, see the ring on it. Okay, so usually there's six check balls in here. One, two, three, four. This one has none, which would be five, and this one here is six. Now this is a reverse pattern valve body I've taken off. So there is a shift kit in that valve body. So under the instructions they probably left that ball out for that's part of the kit. Okay, so this pump has uh, six bolt holes. I've taken the uh, other five already out. <coughs> That's the last one holding the pump in. Into the external bucket. Now there are two threaded holes. One here and one here. For a uh, slide hammer type puller. There's also pullers you can clamp on here and which push on the uh, input shaft which pull the pump out. I usually find that they haven't been in there for a long time. <coughs> Just a rubber mallet. We usually loosen them enough to get them out. Pump gasket, case gasket. We'll take the pump apart late, at a later date. We'll go through it. And you're going to have forward drum. Correct drum. Now you can see this band, this drum has been burnt. Got a burn mark where the band is. The band looks burnt also. You can see there's a fiber washer that goes in between the two drums. We'll take put this aside for now. You have your intermediate band. 
as you can see it's burnt okay next is the uh, intermediate clutches it's a large snap ring quite large and you have your intermediate clutches now the stock tranny would be a wavy one at the last as you can see this one's been replaced we want to, or, sorry it hasn't this is the wavy one we're going to replace that with a flat steel for the racing transmission you have uh, your pressure plate three clutches and three steels Okay, if you can see this bolt right here, this is a bolt that holds the center section in. And you have to have a special socket to get in there. It has to be a very thin walled 3 8 12 point socket. You can't have a thick wall or it won't fit in there. Take that bolt out, get that center section out. And that's a special 12 point, point bolt. Once you've got that out. <clears throat> now to get the center section out, there's a very large snap ring in here. You want to get in behind it and something to pull on it. I usually use a 90 degree pick. Now once you get it started, then you can go in and get it out of there. Now this is different than the other snap ring for the clutches. This has a taper on it on the outside edge. So you want to be careful not to distinguish the two. Now if we just go ahead and pull our speedometer pinion out. Just the one bolt at the back. It houses the speedometer. Just a bolt and one, one clamp on it. Just holds it on. You can go ahead and get in behind it. Okay, this is the speedometer pinion I'm talking about. You can go ahead and get in behind it with a screwdriver and just pop it out. The one gear goes on it. There's an O-ring around the housing. Then at that point you can just go ahead and pull the whole gear set, everything out in one shot. Like so. We can go ahead and just take that center support off. So there's a washer that goes in down in here. Then there's a Torrington bearing also. You can see the race right here. The race is, uh, there's going to be three Torrington bearings in here, and they're all different, so you want to keep them separate. There's the other part of the Torrington bearing here. That's one. And we have a reverse carrier. The band rides around. There's a washer. It goes in inside here. Rides on the carrier here. 
You want to check these gears, make sure they're all in good shape. And then there's a spring and roller assembly. When you pull them out, usually if they're bad, the rollers will fall out. What happens is the springs split in them, and then they don't keep tension on the roller, and then the roller will fall out when you take it out. I'll just go ahead and put that back in there for now. It looks like that assembly is good. <clears throat> then continuing on, there's two washers at the back. The three tang washer sits down in the case. This washer locks onto the gear set here. There's part of the other Torrington bearing. We'll go ahead and take this snap ring out. Snap ring. I'll put shaft. That's the last Torrington bearing here, which goes here on the output shaft. So that's number three. And this is number two in here. You can see this Torrington bearing here. And this was a race that came out of it. So that's number two. So we have one, two, and three Torrington bearings that came out of that this unit. So these are the three Torrington bearings here. This is the first one we took out, which goes on on this carrier here. Then we have the second Torrington bearing which fits in here. And then we have the last Torrington bearing that goes in between these two pieces, the output shaft and this gear carrier, and here. So you want to mark them and keep them in order. Okay, we'll continue on. We'll take the direct drum apart. One large snap ring. Series of clutches, steels in here. Again, in the stock one, the last one may, uh, in the forward may be a wavy. These clutches will all be replaced. We're going to have to use a spring tool, spring uh, retaining tool to, to uh, take this apart. This is the forward. Another snap ring. Reaction plate. You can see the clutches are burnt in here also. There's the clutch drum. There'll be a brass washer here on the bottom side, a fiber washer on the top that we took off earlier, which is this one right here. And again, our clutches. These clutches are burnt, will need to be replaced. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've Remove the input shaft out of the forward drum. I just used a uh, impact socket and just tapped on it lightly. It came out. It's it's not very hard at all. We have a small press. You can use a press. Uh, we're going to install our tool. We can take the snap rings off. It's going to compress the springs. And spring retainer so we can get this snap ring out of here. And 
No, you can use C clamps. That will work also. Just take your snap ring pliers. I like to use a 90 degree set. And just release that tool. In the spring, <laughs> the retainers and uh, snap rings for both the drums are the same. But I would keep the uh, springs separate. It looks like somebody's installed some racing springs in here, which are much stronger. Go ahead and take that piston out. And I would take and put these in a plastic container or a bag and mark them forward, forward, so we know which is which. These are green in color. We have a lip seal that faces up inside the drum. We also have a lip seal on the outer part of the piston and a lip seal on the inside of the part of the piston. I'm going to remove all those. Next we'll do our direct drum. As you can see this has been burnt by the band. You put that on a lathe and uh, sand it up with 120 grit. Usually that should clean up. If not, then you'd have to replace that drum. Again, same thing. Got cocked in there, so just put it back in. Remove our tool. Our spring retainer, snap ring. And again, I would keep these springs separate from the other springs so we know which are which. So these are the direct drum. Again, O-ring in the drum, and the piston. Now I keep the piston separate. As you can see, this one is thinner. Possibly somebody's machined it, I'm not sure. And then you'll notice also either there's going to be a bearing in the piston, or a bearing in the drum. Where in this direct drum, it's in the piston. So if we look in the forward, it's in the drum. You don't want to mix those two up. 
And we'll take our center section. There's also a piston in here. You don't need a tool to depress that though. The springs aren't, there's only three springs in here. And they're not very strong. You can just push down on it. So it's just a snap ring, like a large washer, and you'll see this three small springs in here. That's all that's in there. Then you have your piston and two seals. This is the intermediate piston. So you want to remove those. Now we're going to make a nice little holder for our pump. We use extension housing. And take our pump apart. And we've got uh, five bolts. And if you look, the bolts have lines in them. Take those five bolts out. They go in the interior bolt pan. And we have two ceiling rings here on the pump. You want to take those off. They're going to, they're going to need to be replaced. Now these are a cast iron ring. We're probably going to update the Teflon rings. And you have your washer. This is a pressure regulator valve. It's probably been replaced. <clears throat> if not, we're going to check that it, uh, if it hasn't been replaced, we may shim it with a washer or get a new heavier pressure regulator spring. We'll show you that when we do the pump. This is a pump stator. You can see so this has been sitting around for a while. There is some a little bit of rust, trails of rust in here. Other than that, it looks fine. Just want to make sure there's no grooves in this area where the pump gears ride. Check your bushing in the stator. These are the pump gears. Now these, you can see that uh, the inner gear has a dot and the lug always goes up. As you can see, they're, they're spaced different. Now if you don't have any markings, mark them with something so that you know which side is up magic marker, small, just a small scribe. So you can see the outside gear has a, and this one also has a little marking, so we know that's up. This is the pump body. You want to check in this area here, make sure there's no scoring. Light scratches are all right. This pump is in good shape. And we have a large O-ring around the exterior of the pump body. You want to remove that. We're going to put all new gaskets and seals in this when we rebuild it. Okay, uh, we've got the case standing up here. We're just going to go in, reach in, and just pull that reverse band out. <clears throat> if you pull on the opposite side of where the uh, anchors are, it'll just pull right out of there.